All right, nice job. You did very good, Miss Smith. Excellent, excellent. Okay, um, so first I'm just going to get you unhooked here, and then we'll go over the results. So, all right, so let's get all this stuff off of you. Good. Okay, so um, basically what I found is that the first thing I did, I looked in your ears. Your ears are nice and clear. Um, there was nothing going on there with, say, like any kind of... Uh, uh, any blockage there? There wasn't any wax that was really, you know, blocking the ear canal, so things look good there. There's a little bit, but nothing that really was a problem. Uh, the second test I did was I, I did a quick check to see how well your eardrums are functioning. Um, that that was that little pressure test. Um, that was fine too. No big problems there. If you had fluid behind your eardrum or say a hole uh, in your eardrum, that would have shown up there, but that was all fine. Um, those beeps I played right after that, those were loud beeps. That was a reflex test, uh, and that looked that looked basically normal as well. Uh, then after that when we did uh, the hearing test, that's the results I want to go over here um, just real quick with you. Um, so basically what we do when we test your hearing is we make your audiogram. And your audiogram is uh, the way we draw your hearing. Okay, so the audiogram is right, the audiogram is right here, um, basically in this area. When we go from top to bottom, we go from soft sounds to real loud, okay, then across the, then across the top we have the frequency or the pitch, okay, which is basically a piano keyboard. So it goes from uh, soft sounds to loud sounds, and then bass tones to high pitches. Okay, good. All right. So now on the graph itself, we have our X's and O's. The O's are your right ear, and the X's are your left ear. Okay. Now, as you can see, your X's and O's are pretty much on top of each other, which is a good thing. Okay, that's what we'd like to see. It means your ears are about the same. Okay. Um, but really what this shows is that you essentially have normal hearing in the low pitches, and then it drops to really like a, like a, a moderate uh, sensory hearing loss in the high pitches for both ears, okay? Um, primarily when we're talking about, uh, you know, a moderate uh, sensory hearing loss, that make me conversation a little more difficult, especially if someone's speaking quickly, um, you know, just different things like that, okay? All right, uh, the other things, when I read that long list of words to you, I uh, had you repeat them back to me. Uh, you did a really nice job there. Um, you basically were in the 90% for both ears, um, so that's good to see. Uh, and then also when I read those really, that list of words and I made it softer and softer, um, you did fine with that too. Uh, you heard them in a, at a, basically a normal level um, for, soft, for soft pitches. Um, Okay, so basically because you have the, the moderate uh, sense your hearing loss, that would make you a good candidate for uh, hearing instruments. Um, but before I get into that too far, I just wanted to see uh, if you had... Oh, there was one more thing I wanted to mention, is that with high pitch hearing loss, um, that's where the, the cause of high pitch hearing loss is basically related to the, to the inner ear. And there are little hair cells in there that, um, due to the aging process, noise exposure, hereditary, or you know, a virus possibly, um, start, start not working quite as effectively. Um, and that tends to affect the high pitches first. Um, so that's really kind of the source of where your, your hearing loss is coming from. I know you're concerned about that. Um, but basically, do you do you have any questions about the uh, about the results at all today? <laughs> okay, good. All right. Um, well then, uh, cut. <laughs>